Today, we're gonna to take a look at one of the three aspects of exposure triangle. And that aspect is what we call shutter speed. Shutter speed in a camera controls motion. Why is it important that we learn how to use the aspects of the exposure triangle, and in this case, shutter speed, when we could simply just turn on automatic on the camera? Reason is simple. The camera does not understand what we're trying to photograph. And the key to good photography is what we call control. We want to control the type of image that we get. Now, whether we do that in a manual mode or an automatic mode, it's important that we understand how the camera works so we can give the camera the correct settings to give us back what we want. The reason most photographers or professional photographers tend to use manual is because they want total control over their camera so they get back exactly what they want. So today we're going to take a look at shutter speed and how it can control motion. And then the end of this video, I'm going to give you a little assignment. And the assignment help you learn how shutter speed works. I have a series of slides here and they're gonna give us some information about shutter speed. Down here, we have a series of shutter speeds. And in these shutter speeds, I have two numbers, 60 and 500 highlighted. And there's a specific reason that these are highlighted. These are what we call whole stops. And what happens is if you go from 60 to 30, you are doubling the amount of light that can get in the camera. If you can go from 60 to 125, you are doubling uh, the amount of light that cannot get into the camera. Now, if you look on your camera, you'll notice there are numbers in between these numbers, and those numbers go in third of stops. Now, the reason for that is we actually need to be more accurate when getting an exposure. Originally, back in film days, we only went in half stops, but since digital came along, it's a little bit more sensitive. So we have the ability to change our exposure in third of stops. To simplify the teaching process, we use whole stops. You will also notice, just like up here, this number is actually written one over 60th of a second. So this is one 60th of a second. This is 1 25th of a second. This is 1 2 50th of a second and so on. These numbers also extend further to the left, usually down to about 30 seconds. You usually won't find cameras that go past an 8,000th of a second unless you're getting into high-end mirrorless cameras. So let's come down here and take a look at the 60 and why is the 60 set red? Well, we have our first rule in shutter speed. And look, this rule is not exact. You can determine this rule a couple of different ways. We're going to stick with the simple method just to make learning the process easier. A 60th of a second is the slowest or minimum you should set your shutter speed if you want to take handheld picture, meaning you're holding the camera, of a non-moving subject. Now that can be an inanimate object or a person, but it can't be moving. If you go lower than that, a 30th of a second, a 15th of a second, you can introduce motion blur or blur, and you do not want that usually. Now blur can be advantageous and it can help us get the element of motion, but if we're not trying to blur an image, we don't wanna go below a 60th of a second. That doesn't mean if you set your camera at 60th of a second, you can't get blur. That's why it's the minimum. You're kind of like straddling that line. Part of why this isn't fixed in stone, it really depends on the focal length of your lens. But in general, a 60th of a second is gonna be a good starting point. If you're trying to take a picture of a non-moving object handheld and you can go to 125th, do it meaning that you have enough light. But if you have run into light issues, 
which is usually the issue in photography, you do not want to go below 60th or you can run into what we call motion blur. Now up here, we've got 500. Now 500 is going to be just like 60th. It's a minimum. So if you are trying to stop action, the minimum shutter speed should be 1 500th of a second. However, I will tell you, this is good for just walking or really slow motion. If you really want to stop action, you need to jump up to a thousandth of a second or faster, depending on the type of action you are trying to stop. Now, hopefully you've already watched the exposure triangle video before you've jumped onto this. Remember, every aspect of the camera does two things. One, it's controlling the amount of light. So you can see down here as we go this direction, we're letting more light into the camera. And as we go up, we're letting less light into the camera. Light is always going to be a function of one of the aspects, in this case, shutter speed. It's secondary aspect, and actually the more important, it's controlling motion. Let's go to our next stop here. So in this case, notice that I have added the numbers in between in third of stops. So 30, 60, 125, 250 are going to be your whole stop numbers. And then these numbers are going to be your third of stop numbers that are in between. So if you do see those on your camera, that's what this stands for. Once again, the lower the number, the more light that comes in, the higher the number, the less light comes in. So let's take a look at slow shutter speed and how slow shutter speeds affect your image. Now, one thing that you should note when we're talking about slow shutter speed, it's also going to be dependent on if your subject is still or moving. All right, so in this image here, we're gonna see our first image in which we've got some motion blur. Now, this image can only be taken a couple different ways. One, they use the tripod. If you put your camera on a tripod, the non-moving aspects of the image are not gonna move and the moving parts of the image are gonna move. Or this could have been handheld and this train was moving really fast. And in that case, this would blur. So there's two different ways to do this. And depending on the method and how long your shutter speed is open is good to be dependent on how much this does blur. If it's a slow shutter speed, but not really slow, we're gonna get a little blur. But if it was a really long shutter speed, and we'll see that coming up here in a second, we'll get a really extreme blur of our image. One of the benefits of using blur in photography is photography is basically a two-dimensional object where we're capturing a moment in time. It's sometimes very difficult to give the essence of motion or time in an image. So being able to add blur makes our image come a little bit more alive because it gives us that element of time. So we have another image, and this is an image where we are definitely using a tripod or setting our camera on something. The way this image would be taken, we would put that camera on a tripod and we would let that shutter speed be extremely long. The longer, the more blur and the more glow we're gonna get as the water moves over these different pads and down the stream. Once again, we're using a slow shutter speed to add motion and the element of time to this image. Here's an image I talked about before where we were adding motion or movement in that subway picture, but motion or movement wasn't really blurred in this all we're picking up is the trailing or movement of the lights. And the reason that is, is because one, because the traffic is moving fast. And two, we have a longer exposure. The longer the exposure, the more blur we're getting. And that's how we're getting these trailing lines of lights moving through this image. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a fast shutter speed. So what does a fast shutter speed do for us? Well, it's going to stop action and remember, the minimum is one 500th of a second. But if you really wanna stop action, I would suggest that you move up to a thousandth of a second because that is gonna do a much better job. Now, before we talk about the shutter speed in this image, 
The best thing this photographer did was get down to the level of his subject, which is this little teeny dog. If you were standing up trying to take this photograph, it would not be as strong. So this was really well done. But in this instance, we are using a fast shutter speed. You can see the dog is totally up in the air and we caught everything just at the moment. We also have a very shallow depth of field because the front of the dog is tack sharp and the back of the dog is starting to be soft. In this case, this would be an excellent example of an extremely fast shutter speed, probably up around 1600 to 2000th of a second. In this next image, we've got this guy out here in the water and jumping up. Now, one thing that you can do to really tell that the very fast shutter speed has been used in this image is that you're seeing lots of teeny tiny water droplets. So this, this is telling us it's an extremely fast shutter speed, and we're using that, once again, to catch the sky in the air and stop motion. Here's a more simple image, just a family along the beach, everyone jumping up in the air, and you can see that we are stopping the motion, and this is letting us know that we have a fast shutter speed, because even though there's silhouettes, we can tell there's no ghosting. Now what we see in here is sort of a rim light around our subject. Now that is actually caused by over sharpening and we'll get into this. Actually sharpening doesn't do anything. It actually adds contrast to edges. So we'll talk about that later on down the road, but this is a good example of a fast shutter speed stopping action. So what can we do to learn shutter speed? And I think it's important before you move on to the next aspect, that you really understand how shutter speed works. The key to photography is being able to quickly get your exposure and understand how to do equivalent exposures and understand what each aspect of the exposure triangle does. Because at any one time, depending on what you're trying to do with your photograph, shutter speed, aperture, or ISO could be the most important aspect. That's usually the one that you need to set first. Now, those are actually usually just shutter speed and aperture, but there are some rare occasions where ISO could come in. And just to let everybody know, yes, I know it's called ISO, but I'm old and I call it ISO. What can we do to help us learn shutter speed? We can photograph the same subject, both moving and not moving. So if our subject isn't moving, we'll see how the blur works, and then if the Subject is moving, we'll see how the blur works on any specific shutter speed setting. And look, you shouldn't just leave it on one, you should try a whole range of shutter speeds to see how it's gonna work. Now you have to remember when you change your shutter speed, you're gonna have to compensate for either loss of light or gain of light by adjusting something else. This is what we call an equivalent exposure. So you're gonna be learning multiple things by doing something like this. It's actually gonna be quite difficult for people to adjust shutter speeds and compensate for the amount of light as they're doing this. I think it's important to note, it's really not important to get a good photograph or a good image in this assignment. That's not really the goal. The goal is to learn how shutter speed affects your image and the secondary aspect is learning how to do a better job with equivalent exposures. Well, hopefully this video has been helpful. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>